I like these kinds of videos because I do think that it shows a different side of these uh, areas that are completely eviscerated, destroyed. You know what I mean? I, I like it. I, I, I think it's good to see this because that's how you get so many people in the chat saying things like, wow, I really thought that like everyone in Syria would be wearing the hijab, for example. It's like you're not going to get that if you just watch cnn you know what i mean and you're just not ever gonna you're never gonna understand and then you think about it and then you're like well americans do this to themselves as well i mean look at like look at detroit you know what i mean look at parts of oh my god new orleans like it's just we do this to ourselves dude look at puerto rico we do this to ourselves so of course we're gonna do this to others too look at flint michigan west virginia so many parts of america also kind of look like that too maybe not directly as a consequence of like shelling but obviously not but it's still so awful and destroyed it's crazy it's nine o'clock in the morning here in beirut and i've just flown into the region for the first time the middle east is a region of the world that to be honest i've never visited and i know practically nothing about it's very noisy but i want to change that i want to come like there's not enough soviet architecture here so i don't quite like it i don't quite like it but it's all right I'm here and travel around and meet some people and learn a little bit about this part of the world. It's not very Soviet, I can tell you that already. So, um, <laughs> you literally me. sell! Come on! Oh, dude, dude, oh, dude, dude, dude, dude. Pre watched, dude. <laughs> okay, more points if he says, no babushkas here either. As we make our way now to Syria. What images come to mind when you think of the country of Syria? Uh oh. There's I'm guessing for most of us it's pretty horrific things, and that's because for the last decade, the media has shown us only images of war, destruction, and the suffering of civilians when reporting on the country. And of course, all those things are true. The Syrian crisis has been a catastrophe for the people of that nation. However, I wanted to go and see for myself a little of what Syria is like now in 2022. Surely. Dude, He's not even trying to hide it anymore. Yeah, dude, totally. I literally spent so much time pre-watching the videos. It had to be more to this Middle Eastern country than what the media is showing us. I had no idea, but I decided to head there and try and find out and perhaps humanize and change the perception of the nation a little in my own mind and perhaps in yours too. Bye-bye, boys. Bye-bye. Yay. <laughs> Legends. Right then, let's try and find a taxi that's going to take us to ancient Damascus. Begin our adventure. Taxi! Oh, yes, please, please, Governor. Evet, evet. What is this? Hey! What is it? What is it? Güney, Güney, Turkey. What are you doing drive, here? Drive, what? Hey! Drive, hey! Drive, hey drive, stop. stop! Benjamin. Where are you going? We're okay, going to... Nice to meet you. I'm Abdullah. Abdullah. Nice to meet you, Abdullah. Nice We're going to... Damascus, ancient Damascus. What are you gonna do in Damascus? I actually have no idea. <laughs> Turks are gonna get really f***ing riled up right now. When we're watching this, they're gonna literally start saying, why aren't they going back then? Go home. Straight up. There is a lot of anti-Syrian sentiment in Turkey currently because of the 5 million Syrian migrants that currently live within Turkish borders. And there's also a lot of anti-refugee violence that is occurring in Turkey. So I suspect that, you know, Turks are going to pop the f off on this video and be racist as How are you, Mr. Wilson? Yeah, good, mate. Long time no see. I know. I thought, I, I thought I'd lost you in Ethiopia, mate. Are you ready to try some local delicacies? Mate, the McDonald's out there is supposed to be great. Can't wait. Let's do A it. A Syrian Big Mac. <laughs> how do I say how are you in Arabic? How are you? I mean, Kif Halak. Kif Halak. Kif Halak. Kif Halak. Kif Halak. Kif Halak. Say Halak. Halak. Halak. Halak. Kif Halak. Kif Halak. Kif Halak. All you guys say, Kifak. This video is washing the current government. Pretty obvious paid trip. Is he? Uh, I don't. Kifak. Bro, why can't anybody ever like cover Syria without uh, being like either uh, an Assadist or like why? Why? Why do Americans lose their minds? They're so crazy when it comes to Syria. They're crazier than Turkey, which has been in like active conflict with the Syrian government for many, many years leading up, even before the 
Syrian uh, the war. It's so wild. Like Americans literally cannot have a normal like having an opinion on Syria puts you straight up. I'm sorry if you're an American, you're leftist, neoliberal, right winger, whatever. If you have an opinion on Syria, you're a freak. Okay. I prefer this one. It is a government tour. I use an independent tour agency to travel to Syria. I highly recommend them considering visiting. The manager can be contacted here. Wait, why are you saying is it independent? Why are you saying it's a government tour? Fuck. He fuck. I live on my fuck. He fuck. Are you lying to me? Does this mean no, something no, bad? No. No. <laughs> no. Because it's in a Damascus, the Assad area. Yeah, bro. He should have gone the like Rojava, bro. Like, I can't believe he didn't go to like, uh, I don't know, the northern Syrian corridor where like there's active violence uh, perpetrated uh, against the Kurdish militias on behalf of the Turkish military. You know, like why? Dude, what the? F yeah. Why aren't you literally going to an area where like you're getting shelled? What, what do you mean, dude? Like, what? We, where is he supposed to go? He's like looking at what like the average normal. The average normal Syrian uh, lives how they live. All along the side of this highway that's heading down to the border with Syria is just refugee camps. If you look outside the window, you can just see lots of little shacks and huts. There they are. And those are the camps of the displaced people from the decade-long war in Syria. They've moved to Lebanon to escape the violence. Does go there actually? Sorry for the so spoilers. Okay. We're literally what a hundred feet away from the border with Syria now. You can see the guards are already here, and you can see the checkpoint just up there. Well, we're on the very border now. I've got my passport ready. Going to go <laughs> and get stamped out of Lebanon. Can I just show you though the old Mercedes? Merhaba. There are just Mercedes everywhere, old Mercedes from Europe. Everywhere you go, larders in the Soviet Union, but in the Middle East, it seems, old Mercedes. Check them out, everywhere. Big old beasts. Let's um, go and give our passport, get stamped out of Lebanon. Probably got to put my camera away. Yes. yes. Whoa, that's it. We've been stamped out of Lebanon, and now we're going to try and get into Syria. There you go. Mercedes is an unkillable car. Yeah, very good. Italia? England. That's your back, UK. How dare you, Italia? Oh, how this dare you? This is a college student. Not Italy. Yeah. Oh, unbelievable. Well, English. Well, unbelievable. Italia this is my once again. You see the shit? Uh, you are a true British. Yes. What the, uh, this image is for whom? This which image? Oh, okay. Which one? This. Uh, this, uh, this, this, this is um, yeah. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. <laughs> no. I don't know. No. Well, who is it? No, it's not Shakespeare. I don't, I don't know. know who, huh? I, don't, I have no idea. I'm a fake British. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, boys. Thank you. Sure, yeah. Wow. What friendly people on the border. I know. Fair no, point. Point. No. Oh, oh, people yeah. are friendly in the Middle East. Who knew that? You don't get that when you turn up at Heathrow. Making jokes with you, testing your knowledge of Britain. Oh, wow, this guy's checking in the boots. They are not friendly at the border, I promise. Well, we're now driving through no man's land between the two checkpoints between Lebanon and Syria. And we've just seen a billboard with the first picture um, of the president of Syria, Bashar al Assad. Bro, that border, that border security experience is a one-to-one -one comparison to the Turkish uh, border. Just like incredibly f loose, incredibly casual, just shooting the ship back and forth, straight up. Abdullah just taught me how to say that. <laughs> <laughs> sure, bro, Pepela, dude, you're uh, okay. Well, true. I don't know what the f you want me to say. Well, <clears throat> we're um. We're still on the Syrian border. We've swapped cars. Our driver, Abdullah, has left us and returned to Lebanon. And um, we've How would you know about the Turkish border? 
I don't know, because I'm Turkish and I go back to Turkey. The border doesn't necessarily mean like the physical barrier between Turkey and another country. It's like border control, checking your passport when you enter the country at the, at the airport. We've got a new guy who's going to be our guide or our driver at least while we're here in Syria. So, um, yeah, we're still not into Syria. Well, the yeah, said source on my so on me bit. and my so knowledge of Turkey. Filming, almost in. <clears throat> We've already got our visas. Benim ben kilise değil mi amına koyayım? Evet. Ama hiç gitmedim kilise. Ne yapacağım amına koyayım kiliste? Myself and Simon are just jumping out our car quickly here on the border because up ahead is a sign that you don't see too often in life. And that is a road sign saying Welcome to Syria. Yep. Okay, sir, Sharp, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Guys, this is a very difficult trip to make to old Syria. Just cross the border and we're going to begin our journey. And to make it happen, I want to thank Surfshark for sponsoring the video. Now, what is Surfshark? Po, to see street signs pointing in their direction is just really interesting for me. Um, to see them with my own eyes. So I'm really, yeah, looking forward to exploring anyway. A little bit of Damascus and then further afield in this country. Why are people in the chat so eager to make this video seem like propaganda? Western media has fried people's brains. All around the world, there are nice people. Yeah, I mean... We've arrived in wonderful Damascus, myself and Simon. Surf sharp propaganda. We're gonna meet the man soon who's gonna guide us around Syria. Let's hope he's a nice guy. We'll see when we meet him. But he's gonna go, hello there. Hello, hello. <laughs> are you from Damascus? Uh, we are originally from Hamal. From Hamal, okay, uh, okay. Uh, but we... I was born and raised here. Okay. And who uh, is this, your sister? Just my mom. <laughs> Stop it. Not true. Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, not at all. More than welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Super, thank you. Thank you. I don't know what you said, but thank you so much. Baldo loves. Yeah, bald loves. So, Rami, hello, my friend. How are you? Peace with women. Benjamin. Nice. And my friend Simon. Hi, how are you? What's your name, sorry? Rami. Rami. Simon. Lovely nice to, to meet you. you. Wow. <laughs> it's great to be in Damascus. Yeah. Actually, it's great to see you in real because I saw your video. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not as impressive in real life. Yeah. Well, we're walking yeah, through. We're walking through Damascus. Can you believe it? We're actually in Damascus. Look at Damascus. Wow. Hey guys, how you doing? Wow, friendly Damascian people. Anyway, let's go and find the hotel. We've got. Oh, excuse me, ladies. Thank you. That's okay. Um, we're going to go and find our hotel, dump the bags, and I suppose our oh, man here, right. Rami, is going to, um... Really? Wow, this is going to show my Westoidness, but I'm surprised they aren't wearing the hijab. I thought Jordan, Syria, etc. were onto that. Areas that are not as, as, as influenced by American involvement will oftentimes have less of fundamental... First of all, not Jordan either, for the record, so that's wrong too, but uh, let me explain something to you. If you are a country that has been able to successfully purge American influence, or the further you are, the further you are from American involvement, the less likely you have fundamentalists take over your country in uh, the Middle East. At least you're admitting that you're a Westoid, but that's how it works. Now, of course, there's still. Wait, what do you mean, like Iran? Good one, Azan. What do? You... No, Iran is exactly what I'm talking about. Look at Iran before America did a coup. No, like yeah, exactly like Iran. What? Yes. Said this to a popular loop streamer and just scoffed at the idea. What? The ruins of Northern Syria is the work of U.S. imperialism? Well, uh, you know. All right. There is usually no enforcement of it either, by the way. Now, there is no, there's nothing wrong with like wanting to wear the hijab. If you want to wear the hijab, go ahead, you know, go off. But what we're talking about is places that are, um, Iran is solidly anti-Wahhabist. Iran is solidly anti-Wahhabist, but still very much fundamentalist. The are you talking about are we gonna act like are we gonna act like the iran of today is is not fundamentalist like is that what we're gonna just because they're shia doesn't change the reality that they are also they have their own brand of fundamentalism yeah they're anti-wahhabist certainly the point is and this is a consistent thing that i have mentioned over and over again there are two ways out once america decides to deal with your country and involve themselves with your country okay Either there is a reactionary force that takes hold and is seen as the emancipatory force in the country, i.e. Iran, and they themselves, of course, are going to be very fundamentalist. Or 
you directly uh, are, are aligned with the United States and Wahhabist, uh, and again, still very much fundamentalist, and you align yourself with the United States and then maintain control over the country and then implement, uh, you know, implement the fundamentalist rule. Sorry. You okay? I have COVID, guys. Um, someone in the chat said, yeah, Chechnya, that's Western involvement. Bro, you don't have to try to like move the conversation away from America by pointing to Russia, okay? Every single time. We get it. Russia is bad too, okay? But yeah. Yeah. Oh. How are you? Nice to meet you, man. Ah, lovely Simon's to meet you too. Met, Simon's met a subscriber on the streets of Damascus. <laughs> oh, where are we? This is our hotel they booked us into. It says five star outside. Look, Look at it. It's the um, Betwali. Oh, where are we going? Where are you taking me? Secret corridors. <laughs> well, Beautiful. Okay. Number 507. Five, five, one. Seven. Ah, 501. <laughs> okay. Ooh, thank you. Let me have a look at Don't this. Don't tell me you like wow. Russia. It's a room for no. a king. Ow! <laughs> a clumsy king. <laughs> uh, wow, super. I'm happy with it. Thank you. Wow, here we are then. In old Damascus. Let's check out the bathroom. <gasps> Look at that. A sink for a fair maiden from the Crusades. Look at it. And a shower. Like, the exact same principle exists for Chechnya. If you have a, f a militant imperialist superpower come and fucking level your entire country, the people that end up then taking over will either be A, aligned with said country's um, interests and will be fundamentalist and reactionary, just like the Wahhabis in, in Saudi Arabia, British royal family connection, or they're going to be seen as the emancipatory force. But in Chechnya, it was just the same shit, but for, for uh, Russia, okay? With a little frilly curtain. You don't get that in Moldova or Kyrgyzstan, but you do in Syria. Let's dump our bags and go out for a little exploration. I like it. Oh, so not a problem at all, not a problem at all. We are back on the streets of Damascus and Rami, our mate, has said we're going for the best shawarma in all of Damascus or all yes, of Syria? In the whole, not all Syria. Oh, not all of Syria. in this part because, you know, it, it's really special. It has okay. this garlic cream okay. and also the pomegranate sauce. Okay. So, really special. Shawarma with pomegranate sauce. Let's go and check it out. When you see a shawarma in Ukraine or in Russia or somewhere like on the spit, the little things and here is a look at that spinning round. Wow. Hello, sir. Wow. Well, I've never been to Turkey, bro, I think. From England. And this is the price list. This says shawarma um, and that says chips and that says burger. And that says very delicious. Come and get it. Pepsi? Pe that's how you write Pepsi. That's how you write Pepsi in Arabic. Cola. Cola. Ah, this way. Really? It says cola. Cola. Cola. And it, cola, Pepsi. Cola, Pepsi. Who knew that you got it really backwards? Shawarma. Number one shawarma in Damascus. Shawarma. Yes. <laughs> it's official. <laughs> pomegranate is the secret recipe. You put a bit of pomegranate sauce, and that's it. You get the best. No, I love pomegranate shawarma. sauce, bro. Nadek Shisi is a huge, huge component in Turkish cuisine as well. I'm just surprised that like they put it in the donut. It probably tastes good though. Uh, I can see it tasting good. Pomegranate sauce to donut or just to like Turkish cuisine is like the top of the hour ad break to the Hassan Abi broadcast. You know what I mean? The top of the hour, there's always going to be a, a, a six second ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. You can do that subscribe for $5. You can subscribe for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Or you can get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Abusing Westerners ignorance of pomegranate to get an ad in. Okay. Well, you know, here's the... One minute ad break now. In all of Damascus, here at um, Shwarma Sharif. Simon spilled garlic sauce all down his top. Jesus. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Wow. You turn up for a shawarma and you make friends in Syria. That's how friendly the people are.
We're just walking through a back street of Damascus just after finishing our amazing trial run. And look what we've stumbled upon. This is how ancient Damascus is. It's been inhabited for thousands of years. Look at this. Just random, random Roman columns just here, rotting away in a park. Check it out. These aren't fake, these are real. And look here, we've got ancient graffiti. Look, ancient Snoop Dogg and Diablo Mars. That graffiti is ancient. But no, being serious, this is like amazing that you can walk through the back streets of a city and just stumble upon 2,000 year old columns. Where else can you do that? Rome probably, or Greece, but yeah, Damascus too. Check it out. Well, we've just jumped in a taxi with our new friend Rami because apparently there's a football match on today at the stadium. So we're gonna go now to the football stadium and see a Syrian football match. Let's go and check it out. Has he been a taxi driver for a long time? This is like a taxi, chauffeur taxi. 30 years. 30 years? 30 years was he a taxi driver. Was he a taxi driver during the war here in Syria? Can't be an Azme taxi command. So taxis and things were still working in Damascus at that time? Okay, I'll be back. The taxi was working in Damascus at that time. Yeah, they never stopped. Yeah. Yeah, because in this city, nothing happened. So, so they kept functioning and working despite all the you know, fuel problems. Can you ask our friend to teach me the word friend in Arabic so that I can use it on my trip? Sure. How do you say that? Sadi. Sadi. Sadiq. Sadiq. Sadiq. Simon? Yeah. You are my Sadiq sometimes. Only sometimes. Only sometimes. You're my khara all the time. <laughs> what am I? My khara all the time. <laughs> what is khara? It means lovely person. <laughs> I don't trust Simon and I think the word khara means something bad. But we'll get to the bottom of this. What the fuck? We're following some fans through Damascus towards the stadium. Whoa! Whoa! Wow. That was a We're turkey at the moment right there. Let's go and watch some football. Okay. Yeah. How much is Sadaki? How much is Sadaki? Oh, 1,000. 1,000? Deal! Bargain! Yeah. Three, please. Three. Look at the tickets here. They look like they were just printed on a copy machine. Good. Hey, thank you. You're an honest man. I forgot. Thank you. What team is playing? What team? Uh, Al Wahde. Al Wahde from against Damascus. Damascus. Damascus against. Uh, we are Damascus, yes? Yeah. Okay, good. We're Damascus. <laughs> YouTube! YouTube! YouTube! Travel channel! Okay, penalty to Latakia. Let's see if they score it. Uh, Damascus? Damascus? Damascus. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We're in the away end, for fuck's sake. We're with Latakia. And I've been shouting, come on, Damascus. I could have got my head kicked in. Flip it neck. Come on, Latakia. Yes, yes, yes.
those guys are probably a gendarme or i assume that's what it would be in turkey like some kind of you know military police <laughs> team has left the pitch in protest at the penalty. They're walking off. Hey, bye-bye. Bye-bye, Damascus. No, ours is just the military. So the rule is if Damascus don't return to the pitch within 10 minutes, they forfeit the game. The fact that they've even got that rule tells me... Literally a slang word for police in my language. In Turkey, you have gendarme, okay, gendarme, uh, which is military police, like... And they police areas outside of like the urban centers. Okay. You have the normal police force in urban centers. They are way less militarized. And then you have the gendarme in just like in France as well in every area in like more rural areas, but it doesn't even matter. Like even in Ankara, for example, the capital, there are civilian centers like not civilian centers but like urban centers where there's like big population density you have cops there but then you also have districts where uh the gendarme is supposed to man the area gendarme genel komutanlığı Türkiye'de il ve ilçe belediye sınırları dışında kalan veya polis teşkilatı bulunmayan yerler ve sahil güvenlik bulunmayan kıyı deniz sahillerde görev yapan silahlı genel kolluk kuvvetidir thanks google yeah, i mean that's just basically saying that what i just described to you but in turkish it's just a jurisdiction Tantrums happen quite a lot in Syrian football. <laughs> yeah, country police. Hey! Oh, player! Sign him up for Chelsea, legend. Yeah, sign him up for Chelsea, the shite. He's better than Harry Maguire. <laughs> Attack here are the winners. Damascus or chickens. Well, that was the um, Latakia versus Damascus match. <coughs> Bit of an anticlimax. But what an introduction to what I think is going to be an awesome country. It's all kicking off. Oh, we're out into the beauty of Damascus. Hello, my friend. Hello. Beautiful Damascus. Wow. What a greeting. Oh, come on, bro. As we bro. begin day two, the trio. We've got really lovely. Harold looks different. <laughs> <laughs> Harold, is that you? No. The trio. <laughs> we are beginning day two of our journey here in Syria. And today we're going to leave the capital. And we're going to head north towards towns that, well, we've all heard of. Maybe, in some senses, <laughs> not always... This guy's Gerald Leto if he was bald. Oh, no. This is true, though. For the best of reasons, Aleppo and Homs. Three. And we're going through... Is that Amarillo? Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Amarillo. Hello. Language. <laughs> Guys, as I was walking to the car, you may have noticed I was carrying my own bags. But Simon <laughs> makes the locals carry his bags. Look, there's a man with his suitcase. I, I, listen, I there you go. The bag. There you go. Listen, do you want me to grab his suitcase for you? You are a disgrace. Stop exploiting the locals. Stop exploiting the local Syrians. They've suffered enough already. <laughs> Well, we've now Some left else. Damascus behind, you and you don't else. have to go very far outside of the capital city to start seeing, um, well, remnants of the of the conflict that took <coughs> place here in Syria. Um, yeah, I think now our journey is going to become a little bit different than what it has been so far. just been pulled over at another checkpoint on the road outside of Damascus. It seems that every few miles there's another military checkpoint. Yeah, I wonder why. Making sure we're not baddies. But who's a baddie, who's a goodie in this conflict? I don't know. 
What happened here? So what happened is there was a bomber bombed here. itself here in this spot. And <laughs> this is so fucked up, but I do think it's kind of funny to say a bomber. Sorry. Just kind of, I think my brain is broken, dude. I'm sorry, but like he was, okay, let's just continue. Sorry. Okay. What, uh, and killed the Syrian soldiers in September 2013. And then it is a signal for the other militants to sneak inside Syria. So they sneaked through the borders of Lebanon and they came and they attacked this beautiful village. Like he was a bomber, but separately suicide. Okay, I just... And they destroyed churches. They he was destroyed going through houses, a lot. And they started to make people, force people to evacuate the place. Well, I'm here in the ancient village of Malula, a village that had been at peace for 3,000 years, this place had been inhabited for. And that peace was shattered during the war when the Nusra Front attacked it. And now you can see the scars of that war and what happened here in this village of Malula, everywhere you look. Let's go and have a look in what was once the town's hotel. Well, walking through this hotel overlooking Malula, it just brings home to you the brutality, the horror of the Syrian conflict. Everywhere you look is just bullet wounds, bullet marks, look, pockmarked walls from shrapnel. Look here, just a, a trolley that has just been torn apart by bullets. Walls missing, rebar twisted, everywhere. You can't imagine, can you, just the horrors that the people of Syria... Bro, for, why are people so horny? Like, oh, Al-Assad, innocent. Like, he didn't even say that, dude. What the... He's not saying that at all. I mean, I don't know if he will, but... Like, why are you doing the Twitter thing where you just, like, jump to that? You're doing, like, the Twitter thing where you're just, like, milking doesn't chat is trolling? No, like, they're not trolling. They think that this is, like, propaganda for the fucking Syrian government or some shit. Yeah suffered during this conflict half a million people were killed directly because of it and god knows how many millions more fled the country it's a wonder when you see places like this and well the the reminders of the war that anyone survived at all look at it everywhere you look that el nusra did this what a beautiful piece of propaganda. El Assad's so innocent. He said El Nusra did this. Wait, what? Like, okay. I don't understand. What, what are you saying that, that uh, it was self inflicted? Like, what? I don't get it. You think that they were not, like, are, why are you, are you, are you an El Nusra apologist or something? Like, what the f is happening? Do I have, like, I mean, listen, this is Twitch, so you can have, you can have supporters for anything. I just, like, kind of weird uh, to. Merhaba, merhaba. Wow. Hello, sir. Very pleased to meet you. Very pleased to meet you. Hello, sir. How are you? Hello, sir. Hi, how are you? Wow. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Can you, Rami, can you ask these gentlemen what their language is they communicate in? Wow, so we're in this village of Malula and the people here speak exactly the same language, unchanged, that Jesus himself would have spoken if jesus was propaganda unless he explains how all this started in january 2012 and unless he also visits syrian secret service torture sites all right mods time me out i'll get banned again for hitting the biggest war criminal alive aka bashar al-assad wait isn't this the same person that was like losing their shit over um no like my father's a communist dude you're acting like we're putting you in a f***ing torture site if jesus was here walking these three gentlemen would have understood him perfectly and said, all right, Jesus, how's it going? And Jesus would have said, yeah, all right, lads, in the language of Aramaic. Wow. He 
senses. If you want, you can take him talking. I can translate. Could I hear some Aramaic? Yeah. Yeah. Ahlan bor hun gapaina ucha beblot ah maluya. Blota katimoy watharoy urahmol khud tithele leila. We're having a little drinky poos with this man in the shop here in Malula, ancient Malula. We're going to toast together to a happy Syria. Cheers. Cheers. Michael. Michael. Yeah. Michael? Michael. His name's Abu Michael. Michael. You don't look yeah. like any Michael I've ever met before. Well what about you? Oh, Shukran. Right. And you too. And Cheers, it. Michael. Shukran. Cheers. Wow. Cheers. Yeah. Good old Mike. This is Mike who works in the shop here in Malula. Smells amazing. I'm hiding the camera down below because we've just been pulled over at a checkpoint on the outskirts of Homs, but this isn't a military checkpoint, this is like a faction, a factional yeah. checkpoint. No one here is wearing army uniforms, unlike all the other ones we've seen. Here they're wearing black uniforms. Yeah, that's oh. an old job. They've all got guns as well. Yeah, so, um, we have to be a little yeah, bit that careful. Was no, that was no, oh Jesus. Can I have your passports, please? Yeah, they're in my bag. Guys, welcome to Homs. Well, don't want to be rude, but can you summarize for what you're saying to the American viewers? No, because I'm having a, I'm having a inside conversation this is a see yourself at a turkish people's business moment you know i don't know how else to describe it other than that we're in the ancient city although we're in the new part of homs check it out the conversation center that's of embarrassing homs. to have in english look at it these are the homsian people let's have a little walk up the street and see what we can find so being racist no it's not me being racist but it's embarrassing to have it in English because Turkish people will be saying whatever the f they want about Syrian people in Turkish, but then they'll be like, don't say it in English so they don't hear what we have to say. You understand what I mean? Like, they don't want to embarrass themselves, but they don't have a problem saying it, embarrassing shit in Turkish about uh, Syrian people. Who's he talking to, this gentleman? Talking to me? <laughs> Yeah. England. England. Uh, London. What's your name? Benjamin. And you? Mahmoud. And what's your policeman? Marwan and Marwan. Mahmoud. Marwan. Marwan. But I mean Benjamin. Benjamin. Benjamin. Marwan. Marwan. Manuel. <coughs> Britannia. Exactly. Britannia. Yes. Uh, Brighton. Brighton. Brighton, the gay capital of England. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Better be careful. Hi, Your car? Hi. Okay, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Oh, spasiba. We are in a taxi in Al Homs. Straight on, my friend. Show me the wonders of Homs. Wow, nice Homs. I like it. Hi, you yama yama to love Madaris Dirasa. Exactly. I was going to say that too, but you said it for me. Thank you. Right, where are we off to? Dolandıracak bunu. Ah, okay, okay. Hey, dolandırmazsa zaten adam değil. Aynı zamanda da bana ondan sonra dönüp diyorsunuz ki çok farklı amına koyayım Türklerden, Suriyeliler. Ulan o herif Türkiye'de taksiye binse aynı götü yemeyecekler mi? Öyle böyle yiyecekler götünü adamın. Okay. Whoa, interesting, interesting. Wow. This is the real homes, the back streets. This is a kind of tourist. No, this motherfucker. Okay, here I'll t I'll translate this. No, this motherfucker about to scam the shit out of Baldi. Okay, which is exactly what would happen in Turkey, one million percent. If you don't speak Turkish, even when you do speak Turkish, as I do as well, even if you look like a little foreign, a little sus, they will literally, f they will five x your ass in a taxi. Okay, straight up. That's universal language for tourists anywhere, fam. Yeah, you go anywhere, dude. You go anywhere, especially if you're like Western adjacent. Oh my lord, we will, they will eat your ass. Non-tourist area that Simon and Rami are afraid to come, but not me and my mate Mohammed. We're coming down the back streets of Homs. Check it oh. out. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me. Look at how excited he is. He's like, I'm, I'm gonna make so much money off this bald mother. Oh, very yellow for you. 
There you go. Okay. Oh. Just a couple of dudes cruising around the back streets of Homs. Facebook and YouTube? Yeah, YouTube. Okay, no yeah. problem? Yeah? Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Yes. Oh. Mustafa wants to be on YouTube. But then Homs, Homs. Okay, Homs, Mustafa, taxi. Taxi. People. Second Jamai. Yep, exactly. Exactly right. <laughs> Okay. It's okay? Enough? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> break up, break up. Thank you. Finish. Finish. Finish. Finish. Finish. I look for my Sadiqs. Where is Sadiq? Hello, salam. Brother? Thank you. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're here in this part of Homs. You can really see, well, I suppose what you would expect of Syria if you've been watching the news for the last God knows how many years. I mean, well, look just... at this shit, like, casually. They're just, like, chilling, and look at the buildings, dog. Shit's crazy. Bombed out buildings, shopping centers what was before offices and apartment buildings. Everything just destroyed in this part of the city. And that's because Homs is in the very center of Syria. And so it's one of the first cities to be attacked so that whoever controlled Homs could control the rest of Syria, so to speak. And if you're wondering why so many millions of Syrians left the country, well, take a look at it and you'll understand why. you'll agree with me when I say that Homs looks no, just like on, Belarus. Is this for petrol? Yep. Yep. People are pushing their cars because they have cars. We're on the road to Aleppo, filling up with some smuggled petrol from Lebanon. There's a lot of petrol smuggling here because of sanctions and because of the fact that the north of the country where Syria's oil fields are are now under control of Kurds and other people. And so, yeah, it's difficult here to get petrol for your car. And here by the side of the road also huh. is a gentleman with some goats. They will be going into some shawarmas at some point in the future. Merhaba, merhaba. Wow. You have beautiful goats. Which one is your favorite? Okay. Aya, aya, wahda al-mufaddal andak. Okay. Yep, yep. Thank you. You you're a great conversationalist and um nice meeting you. We're on the road north to Aleppo. We're now coming into the region of Idlib. Çobanı İngilizce konuşmaya çalışıyor. Amına koyayım Suriye'deki çoban yol kenarında. And Idlib region is one of the most dangerous parts of the country. It's the last place or the last governor as you could say on the way north to Aleppo where there is still fighting taking place between different factions. The towns and the villages of Idlib are still being fought over by different groups. <coughs> the journey now until we get to Aleppo is going to become a little bit more dangerous. So we are now in Khan Shekhun, this city, and then we will go all the way north to Aleppo, uh, going through the road M5, right? And the M5, basically this uh, red colored uh, areas are under the control of the government, Syrian government. The green one under the control of Nusra, Qaeda, uh, you know, uh, the militants, they have different titles, but same ideology, same mentality, they are extremists. So we will uh, pass through this area and it is like three kilometer, 30 wow. kilometers away from the territories that are uh, outside the control of the government. Well, we've reached the outskirts of the city of Aleppo. As the sign says, 
Welcome to Aleppo. Welcome. Lovely people, Welcome. Syrians, but not the best spellers. But um, anyway, let's go and check out the city. Welcome. See what it's like. I bet it's awesome. I like these kinds of videos because I do think that it shows a different side of these uh, areas that are completely eviscerated, destroyed, you know what I mean? I, I like it. I, I, I think it's good to see this because that's how you get so many people in the chat saying things like, wow, I really thought that like everyone in Syria would be wearing the hijab, for example. It's like you're not going to get that if you just watch cnn you know what i mean and you're just not ever gonna you're never gonna understand dude there are so many countries like this when i think about it like we're looking through we're looking through like all the war th uh, war torn areas in syria and i'm just like bro there's latin american countries with similar f shelled out destroyed maybe not shelled out but like destroyed infrastructure anywhere that like there's any kind of f involvement any kind of conflict where the west is like put his f hands uh anywhere near uh, a country you just see this and then you think about it and then you're like well americans do this to themselves as well i mean look at like look at detroit you know what i mean look at parts of oh my god new orleans like it's just we do this to ourselves dude look at puerto rico we do this to ourselves so of course we're gonna do this to others too look at flint michigan west virginia so many parts of america also kind of look like that too maybe not directly as a consequence of like shelling but obviously not but it's still so f awful and destroyed it's crazy. Well, I must say, I'm pretty impressed with Aleppo so far. It's all looking nice and untouched by the war or anything. Pretty buildings made of nice colored sandstone, limestone, some stone. But, um, what, even parks? Look at it. There's a swimming pool. Aleppo, city of dreams. Okay, okay, thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you, thank you. That was a local Aleppo man, and this is the kind of stuff he has to walk past every day on his way to the market to make a few bob. Look at it. Unlike in the center of the city, the business district is completely untouched there, pretty much, I should say. Um, but here in the old part of town, where here you can see the real scars of battle that took place between the government forces and the Al Nusra Front, the faction that um, took control of Aleppo for a, a number of years. And look at it, everything has been damaged. Thank you. Wow. An Aleppo barbershop. Shukran. He sounds like he's doing a lot of trimming. I hope he's not going too crazy. It's looking want, well. I don't want to turn off the 3%. What's this? Or well, is this man living in Aleppo in the war? Get eyes will help the halak or the plot. It's interesting that we see how life just sort of kind of goes on when you're living in a 10-year war. Cabbies don't stop driving. People still go to work. It's surreal, but important to see the disconnect between the government factions and the people on the ground. I mean, it doesn't even need to be a 10-year war. Look at literally Ukraine today. Ukraine has, especially in the Western parts, has gone back to living. You know, just look at Ukraine right now. Buses are still running. Homies are going to work. You know what I mean? It's done. Barber's about to recommend Turkish hair transplanter as a baldy. Yeah. Our offshore team in Kyiv is back online. Yup. He never left Aleppo. He said we lived uh, in fear here. Mm -hmm. It was really terrifying. I can imagine. Yes. Is it painful? Very painful. Yes. Mm. The Syrian experience is painful. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Dude, what? Why are you doing this to me? COVID turned your hair oh, gray. Your... That's fucked. No, it's not COVID. <laughs> it's not COVID that turned my hair is gray. It's you, mother. People like you in the chat. Because <laughs> you're British. Oh, oh well, what are you years. doing? This is pretty, yeah. <laughs> the British government was involved. This is the worst <laughs> going on. That shit is you so You'll never have this oh. experience anywhere else. Thank God. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Shukran. Shukran. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
I'm it looking, looking handsome. very fresh. Am I? Mate. Am I looking very better? Fresh, yeah. Rami, have I got a chance of finding a Syrian wife now? Well, just now you can find a Syrian. Finally. Wife. Yes. Presentable to their mothers and yes, fathers. Yes. I will try hard to find you one. Good. Now look for wives. You can actually see your double chin coming through. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I mean, that's not the worst thing, you know what I mean? Well, I know that it's peaceful in Aleppo, but of course the signs of the war are everywhere. I mean, what's the future for Syria? How do you fix your problems? How does all this end and you start rebuilding? Yeah, so the, the first issue is that we have foreign interference in Syria. Okay. And that is the number one problem, is that we don't need this interference. We Syrian people are really smart enough to solve our problems. So I would say if the, the future of Syria would be really uh, good if those troops just leave Syria and leave us Syrian, decide our fate and solve our problems. You hear that foreign troops? Get out. And as I say that... Brave take by, by Baldi. Look what is here in front of us. A magnificent flipping castle. Hundreds of years old. Check it. Wow, that is magnificent. Did you know? Did you be honest? Did you know that Syria had ancient castles like this? I didn't. Let's go and look inside and see what it's like. Flipping heck, it's amazing. You know when you're a kid and you draw a castle, you basically draw this one. Look, big old moat around it, crenellated turreted walls. Flipping heck. Of course, now it's showing the signs of modern battles, but this castle, this castle has been attacked by pretty much everyone throughout history. The Mongols. The Mongols came all the way from southern Siberia, all the way here to Aleppo, and attacked this castle. Let's go inside and check it out. What a place Syria is. Well, for four years, the Syrian army was stationed up here on the very top of the old castle of Aleppo. For four years, they fought off wave after wave of attack by different factions, different factions who were trying to control the city of Aleppo. They were resupplied by helicopters My next house. and by the ancient tunnels yeah, I'm about that weave away under Aleppo and into the castle. Hold on, I gotta grab something. And now, of course, with the war in this part of the country being over, the citadel has returned to, well, being a tourist attraction and a place for the young lovers of Aleppo to come and have a little kiss and a cuddle amongst the tall grasses and the old derelict buildings. It's a romantic city, is Aleppo. Oh, yeah, I'm from Syria. Nice to meet you. Thank where, you, thank where you. from Aleppo? Or? Damascus. Damascus, yeah, nice. It's also my twin is here. Time. We are basically oh, twins. It's a Syrian <laughs> <laughs> bankrupt. I've met my Syrian <laughs> twin. <laughs> wow, you even wear the same clothes that I usually yeah, wear. Exactly. My God. Where we have just been? <laughs> <laughs> Separated at first. <laughs> we really look alike. We do look alike. Let's but, do a little. So let's do it. <laughs> yeah. This is it. My Syrian twin. <laughs> he found another bold, a boldy. Thank you. To the Baron Hotel. Hotel Baron, uh, old uh, hotel in. After this, I want to try another test, another COVID test, see if I've recovered. Oldest hotel in Aleppo. Probably not. Probably ah, I not, see. But... One nine one one. Built in 1911. Thank you. 1911. Let's go and see what it looks like inside. Agatha Christie stayed here for God's sake. So it's good enough for Agatha. No. Shot. Who knows, dude? Maybe my system is built differently. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Check out the old map of Syria, archaeological map. Hey, look at this place. This is unchanged. Hello. Hello. Salam. Hello. May I look at your beautiful hotel? Wow, thank you. Look at this place. This is a real timepiece. Look at it. You've got the old telephone box. And an old telephone. You're joking. We were dying like 20 minutes ago. I was just coughing. Chill. This is the kind of hotel that appeared in Agatha Christie novels. 
Someone would have been murdered. Probably the butler did it with a lead pipe in the library. Anti work. Look around. Uh, propaganda. Look at this. Look at all this stuff. BOAC. They haven't flown for decades. But I suppose in the past, we had flights coming to Aleppo from London. You know, this place was, um, well, Aleppo and Syria was a place that people came to. You know, now, of course, it's off the tourist map because of what's happened with the war and stuff. But in the past, people came to the old Baron Hotel. Check it out. We're going upstairs in the Baron's Hotel to look at the room where Agatha Christie stayed. Have you read anything of Agatha Christie? Simon didn't know who Agatha Christie was. I thought she was super famous with oh everyone. Oh my God, anyway. my grandma used to love Agatha oh, look at this place, unchanged. Unchanged from the golden age of travel. Look at this. Here in the corridor, I just want to show you, there's an old poster, an original, for the London to Baghdad Simplon Orient Express. You used to be able to get on the train in London and travel down to Baghdad on the Orient Express. Hence, Agatha Christie here wrote part of Murder on the Orient Express. Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie. Uh -huh. Wow. Look at this. Wow. This is unchanged. This is unchanged. Here's a picture of Agatha Christie. Here she is. Wow. How interesting. This is literally the most amazing hotel I've ever seen here in Aleppo. Agatha Christie wrote crime novels. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Not the most comfortable. Wow. Probably had a bad back. I think that what? Who is the Syrian? Hey, look, this is okay. I said, look, I have a head. I have arms. I have legs. I have body. I said, one arm can be what? A Jew. The other arm can be what? A Turkman. A leg can be an Armenian. The other leg can be a head can be an Arab, and the heart can be this and this. So the Syrian is a, after all this mixture, of course, mosaic. as years, it is a big mosaic. So after that, in every Syrian, you will find a part, somewhere a part of an ethnic group. secular country in the Middle East. Christians, Jews, Muslims, Shia, Sunni, everyone lives peacefully in Syria. Fucking loud, sorry. What the f*** is this, dude? <laughs> you look very good, Khabibi. Very good, Khabibi. Oh, look, it's uh... <laughs> It's Papa Smith. Okay. Well, yeah, good work. Keep going. Uh, from where you are? England. England. Welcome. Come to look at beautiful Syria. Nice to meet you. Good luck nice with your work. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, as that young girl <coughs> just said, we're passing through Christians are one pretty of the metal. that was completely destroyed by the war. Dude, they are pretty. We Hear metal, the old shot. Crazy Christians are crazy. Not yet restored, still broken. But here we can see where they're starting to fix up Aleppo, and um, you can see here what the souks looked like before. Aleppo was a city that was on the Silk Route before um, trade and goods passed through Aleppo on the way from Europe to Asia and vice versa. Um, and this is what it would have looked like. These are the old souks, the old bazaars, the old marketplaces of old Aleppo. Look, look how beautiful it all would have been, this city. What an amazing place it would have been. Until, of course, the war came to town. What do you sell in your shop? Yes. Wow. What are these? I see these on the streets. What, what are these? This one? Yeah, what is it? This is uh, for men. Okay. Like this. Somebody will do it like this. You know? Yeah, oh, I like this one. This is uh, the best one. This uh, is the good one. Yeah, it's I'm the... too tall. I'm too tall. Uh, yes, <laughs> it's difficult for me, like this. And you look like Lawrence the Arabian. Yes. Yes? Yasser yeah, Arafat? 
I'm Jewish. He's a poet. <laughs> That is great. Oh my god. Oh, he, he was, I'm hanging around with ignoramus. Do you honestly not know him? No, he, he, so he, he was born in Venice, I know. He goes, no problem. <laughs> Venice, because the airport's named after him. Yeah. But do you not know what he did? Honestly. No, oh, honestly. Okay. Marco Polo. <laughs> oh my yeah, god, I can't believe it. Mate, you manufacture everything for your video. Listen. I can't believe I'm hanging around with a couple of dummies. You just said you're going to edit out that I knew what he said. Well, who was Marco Polo? You got your chance now. Who was Marco Polo? Are you winding me up? Are you winding me up? Mate, oh, ask me. Listen, I'll answer when you ask me proper question. Who was Marco Polo? Marco Polo is a merchant. Oh, here we go. Traveled through the Silk Road in thank the 13th you. century. Thank Five you. Thank you. Uh, exactly. That's exactly. Simon. He's just copied what I said. Simon, you have. Right, can we go for a McDonald's? <laughs> A McDonald's now or what? You're having a laugh, mate. You fing having a laugh. You're having a fing laugh. You're winding me up. Well, now, Habibis, that is the end of our journey across the incredible, the ancient, the fascinating, the friendly, the delicious Syria. Simon Wilson. Did you have a good time, mate? I did, mate. It was a top time. Yeah? I would say this place time. is probably the most pleasantly surprising place that I've been than from what I expected to what the we The most have. Scottish motherfucker, dude. Actually gone. If that makes sense. Makes sense. He's Scottish, right? Or is he Welsh? Not Scottish. It's not Scottish. Welsh Lamau. Wait, really? He sounds so f Scottish. Oh my god. Northern English. He's British. Almost top of the hour. Announced with the Scottish accent today. Less sex pestery than I expected, to be honest. I'm almost disappointed. Not Scottish moron. Oh, shut up, British people. British people. Literally f sound different. Uh, different neighborhoods have different accents, okay? I'm sorry, I can't f keep up. Fucking weirdos, dude. British diversity. Oi, mate! Oh, you sound like you don't understand the intricacies of our British diversity. He's not Scottish, you fucking donut. You having a f laugh, then? Oi, mate, you having a f laugh, yeah? You think it's funny, yeah? You think it's funny? It's not even funny. Tuesday is not even Tuesday. You're out here making, you're out here cracking jokes, yeah? Real nutter. Most people are just Scottish people who hate England even more. <laughs> Tosser, not donut. Please do the high pitch. Poverty. Please say poverty. Poverty. It's poverty, love. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, isn't it? Oi, bruv, that's a bit offensive accent you're having at the expense of your English brothers. Everyone knows it's the top of the hour. <coughs> Celebrities. Even though most British think Americans sound like cowboys throughout the whole US. Have you downloaded Truth? I'm cosplaying as a Trumper. No, I have not. Wales isn't a real country and I'm tired of pretending it is. Dude, you are going to upset the four Welsh independence movementers in my community. Including one of my, like, uh, Discord... I can't tell. Is he a regulator or is he just the is he a, the other role? I don't know. Monitor, right? Yeah. Wells. Wells. You need to offend the Welsh. Um. My fanny is flattering, in it. Mate, should we have a little word from our other friend on this trip? Rami. Hello. My Syrian brother from another mother. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much you, for this tour. Thank you, too, for bringing attention to Syria. British are actually fans and find the accent funny, but Americans get annoyed? No, I doubt it. I doubt Americans get annoyed. Americans love making fun of or England for, like, they act like, you know, we're not worse overall now. Americans love any opportunity to shit on another country that, like, at least in its history has done more fuck shit. You know what I mean? You know, uh, giving people the authentic image here in Syria. And actually, I want to tell you that those guys are really as fun as off camera. Believe me, it, it was We didn't free. pay him to say that. Yeah, I mean, let me count them. No, I did pay him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, um, not really much more to say. I think that we've shown you um, the Syria as we experienced it. Um, yeah, just wanted to show you what life is like on the streets of Syria and in the towns and things. A little bit of the old, bit of the new, bit of the people, like this chap, a nice Syrian man, going for a walk in the morning. And um, that's it, nothing else to say. 
If you're worried about coming to Syria because you think it's dangerous, then I wouldn't worry about that at all. That's not an issue at all. Horatio um, Benz, thank you, thank you for the 25 gifted, bro. Thank you. Yeah, it's a fascinating Very country. Nice. And I'm looking forward to learning more about the Middle East. We'll explore more by the next time. We'll probably be back in Soviet lands, more familiar territory. But um, Shukran Syria, and yeah. goodbye. What's goodbye? Bye bye. Oh, bye bye. Salam. Salam. Salam. <laughs> Salam from Syria. See you later, guys. Bye bye. bye. Um, yeah. Good one. Bye bye. Can I try to speak some Welsh? Do you want to? Here you go. I spoke it. Don't get mad at me, Welsh people. I just, it's impossible to say the things in your language, okay? I didn't curse you. I just tried to speak fluent Welsh. You said a slur. Too much phlegm, not enough consonants. Sounded pretty Welsh, to be fair. Most simple Welsh town name. I mean, this now one today, is specific. We had a big contrast in temperature across the UK, just 12 degrees over coastal parts of eastern England with cloudy skies. But in the sunshine in northwest Wales at RAF Mona, just up the road from Clanbyd, Pushkwing, Gogedekwindrobo, Clantisilio, Gogogogh, the temperature got to 21 Celsius. That's yeah. I mean, was I wrong? Was I off in the way that I presented the language? I'd be proud of, I'd be just as proud of myself too if I could. That like that i mean that's an incredible thing to be able to pronounce it's also it just sound it looks like your cat ran over the keyboard when you were naming towns okay <laughs> oh, jesus christ what does this even mean hey if you like this video please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos <laughs>